66 million years ago. Something pretty substantial happened in Earth's history. The mass extinction event linked to a major asteroid impact in what's now the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico wiped out an estimated 65% of species alive on the planet at that time. This mass extinction at the end of the Cretaceous period is the big one that wiped out the dinosaurs, pterosaurs, plesiosaurs, all kinds of other organisms, and it paved the way for the rise of mammals, which we're a part of. And because of all those implications, the last 15 million years of the Cretaceous period leading up to the extinction is one of the most intensively studied times in Earth's history. To understand the extinction itself, you really need to know the dynamics all over the world about what was going on. Some places in the world, like Western North America, we know a lot about. We know a lot about the horned dinosaurs and duckbills that were the herbivores, and of course, the giant predatory tyrannosaurs. But that's not true of all the continents. We've only really begun to understand the latest Cretaceous ecosystems, especially in the southern hemisphere, in the last 30 or so years. Excavations in South America, Madagascar, India have revealed a very distinctive, different kind of ecosystem dominated by long-necked sauropod dinosaurs and stubby-armed horned predators called abelosaurs, and lots of weird crocodile relatives, some living on land, some in the water, some predators, some herbivores. But despite all those advances, there are some major gaps in our understanding of the end of the age of reptiles. Some entire continents for which the latest Cretaceous ecosystems remain a huge mystery. If we really want to understand the whole story, we have to start uncovering some of those mysterious places. This is a story of how paleontologists are just beginning to uncover the latest Cretaceous of North Africa. I'm Adam Pritchard, and this is Pastime. I'm specifically going to be taking you to the country of Egypt, which has a long, rich history of vertebrate paleontology. Some classic dinosaurs come from the middle part of the Cretaceous period, between 100 and 90 million years ago in Egypt, like the sail-backed predator Spinosaurus and the gigantic carnivore Carcharodontosaurus, in addition to all kinds of long-necked sauropods, gigantic fishes, and equally gigantic croc relatives. But those ecosystems are over 30 million years before the mass extinction event. And as a result, there's a big gap in the North African fossil record before you get to the time of the extinction. We have some deposits that preserve beautiful fossils from aquatic marine ecosystems that preserve fragments of dinosaurs, isolated backbones or jaws, but not enough to really get at the complexities of what was going on on land during the latest Cretaceous in North Africa. But that's a gap that's being filled by excavations in a remarkable geologic unit called the Kassara Formation in central Egypt. Preserving an ecosystem from the northern shores of Africa, the Kassara fossils are much closer to the time of the extinction than the dinosaurs I talked about previously. We're talking more like 10 million years from the extinction. It's a first real good snapshot of a land ecosystem from that latest Cretaceous time in Africa. And it's amazing. And it helps us answer some serious questions about what was going on on land in Africa during that time. For much of the Cretaceous period, Africa was an island, isolated without land connections to any of the other continents. So there are big questions over whether or not the parts of the ecosystem show connections between Africa and any of the other land masses. And being the Cretaceous period, one of the first things to come out has to be a dinosaur. From the journal Nature, Ecology, and Evolution, New Egyptian Sauropod Reveals Late Cretaceous Dinosaur Dispersal Between Europe and Africa. This is a paper by Dr. Hisham Salam of Mansoura University, one of the major figures in vertebrate paleontology in Egypt, and it describes a new dinosaur, Mansourasaurus. This is a long-necked sauropod dinosaur. Mansourasaurus is only a little bit longer than a school bus, probably heavier than anything living on land today, but not one of the absolute supergiants. 
What's really interesting about Mansurosaurus is that its closest relatives lived across the sea in southern Europe. So the remarkable skeleton of this dinosaur is a solid suggestion that there were connections between the land animals in southern Europe and northern Africa, despite there being an ocean between them. How they got from place to place? That's still to be determined. But Mansurosaurus suggests that dinosaurs in Africa were not completely isolated from their cousins on other continents. But what's really cool about the Kassara excavations in the last several months is it hasn't just produced one dinosaur. From the journal Cretaceous Research, an enigmatic crocodiliform from the Upper Cretaceous Kassara Formation, Central Egypt. This is a paper by paleontologist Sarah Saber of Asiut University in Egypt. And her colleagues include much of the same international team that helped describe Monsurosaurus. In this paper, she introduced the world to a new species of crocodile relative that lived alongside Monsurosaurus, Wahasuchus. And superficially, Wahasuchus looked an awful lot like a modern-day alligator. A broad, flat snout, big, thick, blunt teeth for biting through prey. But it would have looked a little bit weird. The cavities for its eyes are positioned very far on top of the skull, so the eyes of Wahasuchus would have pointed straight up. It was a pretty big animal, between 10 and 15 feet in length. But what's really remarkable about Wahasuchus is that when paleontologists looked at all of the bones together, they saw a strange combination of anatomical details that just, well, they didn't look exactly like any other crocodile relative known from anywhere in the world. Unlike Monsurosaurus, which seems to have close cousins in southern Europe, Wahasuchus just looks kind of unique. What this suggests is that much like many of the other latest Cretaceous ecosystems around the world, the ecosystem preserved in the Kassara Formation of Egypt was unique, with species found nowhere else in the world, but also connected to the land masses relatively nearby, even if they were across an ocean. But this is only the beginning of the story. Continued study will hopefully tell us about all kinds of other animals, the big predatory dinosaurs, smaller herbivores, smaller carnivores, mammals, plants, who knows? What's really cool about these excavations is that they're part of what's called the Island Africa Project, which is led by the Mansura University vertebrate paleontology team. Dr. Salam, who wrote the paper on Mansurosaurus, is one of Egypt's premier vertebrate paleontologists. I actually met Dr. Salam almost 10 years ago when I first came to Stony Brook University, and he is one of the most soft-spoken, nicest guys you will ever meet. But he and other Egyptian paleontologists, like Sarah Saber, are leading the way in unearthing the age of reptiles in Egypt. So to them and their international collaborators, I say good hunting because we cannot wait to see what you find. If you want to take a look at some of the amazing fossils of Matsurosaurus and Wahasukas, check out our website at pastime.org. If you want to see more updates in paleontology and about the podcast, follow us on Twitter and Facebook at Pastime Paleo, and subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, and leave us a review if you like what you hear. With that, I'm Adam Pritchard, and we'll see you next time on Pastime.